You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, we've got some bombshell reporting here from CNN, according to court filings from the Arizona indictment of 18 allies of Donald Trump, but not Donald Trump himself. It turns out that the grand jury expressed interest in indicting Donald Trump. So obviously a major story here. If there was interest, why didn't it happen? A dagger through the heart of this old prosecutor, Brian. When I heard the Arizona grand jurors heard the evidence of Donald Trump's crimes and said, we want to indict him for violating Arizona state laws. And the prosecutor said, hold up, not so fast. We don't want you to do it. Now, there are reasons, and let's take a few minutes talking about what those reasons are, that a prosecutor might tell a grand jury, a grand jury who is sitting there to decide who should be indicted as part of Donald Trump's corrupt scheme to, you know, basically rob the people of Arizona of their votes in the presidential election in 2020. The same thing that happened down in Georgia for which Donald Trump is indicted. You know, there are some reasons that a prosecutor might say, hold up, hold up. So let's talk a little bit about the grand jury and, and what is involved. So first of all, a grand jury investigation really is the grand jury's investigation. Believe it or not, Brian, it's not the prosecutor's investigation. Now, when I was a prosecutor, I exercised the power and authority of the, the grand jury. I would take grand jury subpoenas. I would issue them to witnesses. Those witnesses would appear and testify before the grand jury. And then after all of the evidence was presented, not just witnesses, but documents and photographs and physical evidence and forensic test results, et cetera, after it was all presented, the prosecutors make recommendations to the grand jurors about who we believe should be indicted in accordance with the evidence that has been presented to the grand jury. Now, 18 defendants were indicted by that Arizona grand jury, including people like Rudy Giuliani, Mark Meadows, Jenna Ellis. There's two of Donald Trump's dirty lawyers right there, Rudy and Jenna. And of course, Mark Meadows was his former chief of staff, and then 15 other defendants. And now we know based on the reporting, the grand juror said, oh, 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 and we want to indict Trump because there's enough evidence to do that. Right. So first of all, in order to indict anybody, you the, the prosecutors have to be convinced that one, there is probable cause in the evidence that was introduced to the grand jury. Probable cause is a pretty low evidentiary standard. Believe it or not, it's about 50% of the evidence. Really, it's a tick below 50% of the evidence. But for a prosecutor to be comfortable that indicting somebody is the right thing to do, you've made out probable cause, we also have to have a reasonable belief that when we get to trial, we will have been able to build that evidence to proof beyond a reasonable doubt. And it's a huge chasm in the burden of proof, the evidentiary hurdle we have to overcome to make out probable cause versus to make out proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So sometimes when you have bare probable cause as a prosecutor, you might say, you know what, folks, I know we have bare probable cause here, but we're going to recommend you don't indict one of the 18 or 19 defendants that we've been investigating because we're not quite there yet on the evidence. So that is one possibility. And here's the thing. Um, there was a, a line in the reporting, I think it was from CNN, that said um, when these records were disclosed about what had gone on in the grand jury pursuant to some litigation in uh, Arizona, um, the prosecutors told the grand jury the following. They said, you know what? We might not quite be there yet on the evidence implicating Donald Trump in these crimes. I think that speaks volumes. It sounds like the prosecutors told the grand jurors, listen, we hear you that you think there's enough to indict Donald Trump, but there's a lot that goes into indicting a former president, and we're not sure we're quite there yet. But you know what? There has been a recent development, literally in recent days, that might change the prosecutor's calculation on that very question because one of Donald Trump's lawyers, Jenna Ellis, decided to cooperate. She flipped and she promised in writing, in an agreement with the prosecutors to testify fully, truthfully, and accurately against Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, Mark Meadows, and all of the other remaining defendants in the Arizona case. Now, if, they, if the prosecutors told the grand jury to hold up a minute, 
because they thought maybe we wanted to strengthen our case a little bit against Donald Trump. Well, they may now have the evidence that they believed they needed, and there's no reason they can't go back before a grand jury and now return an indictment against Donald Trump. At least that's kind of what I'm looking for as I read the tea leaves. Okay, so a, a few questions to dive into here. But first, uh, just a quick note for our legal breakdown viewers. Um, we've done over 350 episodes so far. I uh, just wanted to ask for a small favor. I have a book coming out in a few days here called Shameless. Uh, it's available for pre-order right now. If you're looking for a way to support our work, of course, Glenn and I will never put our content behind a paywall or anything like that, and we won't take sponsors. But a good way to support uh, my work right now is to pre-order Shameless. So I'll put the link right here on this screen and also in the post description of this video. Um, very proud of the way it turned out. Jamie Raskin wrote the foreword for it, includes interviews and insights from from Pete Buttigieg, Jen Psaki, Mark Elias, Al Franken, and a number of others. So uh, again, if you're looking just for a small a small way to, to help me out, that would be uh, that would be very greatly appreciated. Okay, so Glenn, is this the kind of thing where these prosecutors may very be, well be waiting for a conviction for the for the those who are currently indicted, those 18 uh, indicted co-defendants, and then they could use those convictions eventually to help them with an indictment against Donald Trump. You know, that's a possibility. Listen, all of the prosecutors are playing the long game when it comes to prosecuting Donald Trump and all of the other ruling class criminals. You know, the, the upper echelon of this criminal scheme, not just the fake electors who are kind of the flunkies of Donald Trump's criminal attempt to steal the presidential election, but the Mark Meadows, the Rudy Giuliani's, the John Eastman's, the Jeffrey Clark's, the, the Sidney Powell's and the Kenneth Chesbro's, those characters. It could very well be that the, the prosecutors will make the decision, okay, we're gonna take these other folks to trial. We're gonna get them convicted. And here's the thing that people might not be aware of. You know, I, when I was a prosecutor, I went hard after cooperating witnesses. When somebody had committed a crime, and I believed I could prove it, but I knew they had evidence that they could give me against the bigger criminal fish in a conspiracy or in a criminal enterprise, I went hard after those cooperating witnesses. And sometimes they said, nope, I'm not pleading, I'm not gonna flip, I'm not gonna go against the de facto mob boss, the bigger criminal fish, so I would say, fine, I'm gonna give you a fair trial. Brian, I'd take them to trial, I'd get them convicted most of the time, not all of the time, I lost my share of cases over my 30 years as a prosecutor, but after I got them convicted, and now they were concretely maybe facing 20 or 30 years in prison, before they were sentenced, I stepped back to them with their lawyer, and I said, well, you went to trial. That didn't work out so good for you, sport, but guess what? It's your lucky day, because the window of cooperation is still open this much. You're not gonna get as much of a benefit as you would have if you'd come on board before I had to take you to trial and convict you, but I can still perhaps shave 10 years off your sentence. I can ask the judge to reduce it if you cooperate now. Better late than never, do the right thing. And Brian, sometimes that had the desired effect and people would come on board even after they were convicted of their crimes. And I would never, you know, say, hey, I had to take you to trial, you're not getting anything from me. No, I always kept my eye on the justice ball because I wanted the biggest criminal fish the evidence could get us. So listen, it may be that some of the prosecutors are sort of following that playbook. They'll take these people to trial and then they'll step back to them and try to bring them on board. Or one other thing at the risk of running on, turning this into a, you know, a criminal law class. Um, the other thing that prosecutors can do is they can take somebody to trial, they can convict them, and once they're sentenced, guess what? Their rights against self-incrimination are basically at an end. Now, they retain their right against self-incrimination during the appeal, but at that point, the prosecutor can just give them immunity because they've already been tried, and you can force that person to become a cooperating witness even though they don't get any benefit out of their cooperation. So there is more than one way to skin the justice cat, and maybe some of the prosecutors are playing that long game. All right, so we obviously have some silver linings here, both with a grand jury that already seems willing to indict Donald Trump, as well as the prospect that as many as 18 
uh, possible convictions could result in flipped defendants uh, in terms of helping the prosecutors ultimately get to Donald Trump in the end. So uh, keep an eye on what's happening in Arizona. It's going to be a big story in the coming months here. So Glenn and I will, of course, continue to stay on top of this, as well as the other prosecutions that Trump is contending with right now. If you want to follow along, please make sure to subscribe with the links to both of our channels and right here on this screen. By the way, Glenn is fast approaching a million subscribers. If you are not yet subscribed to his channel, please go ahead and click the subscribe button right here on the screen. I'm Brian Teller Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.